Rinpoche is an author and meditation master in the Dzogchen uh, tradition of the Buddhist uh, Tibetan Buddhism. He is the founder and spiritual director of the Pristine Mind Foundation based in Marin County. He studied with Jigme Punzog Rinpoche, one of the greatest Dzogchen master in the 20th century, uh, who passed away recently. After completing Rinpoche's studies with uh, Jigme Punzog Rinpoche, he received his Kempo uh, degree, which is the highest degree of uh, Buddhist study and practice in the Buddhist tradition. And Rinpoche currently resides in, lives in Bay Area, travels around the world to give teachings and retreats. I'm very, very happy that Rinpoche is able to come to Google today. Let's welcome uh, Organ Chowan Rinpoche to Google. And thank you for everyone coming today <clears throat> to uh, listening teachings and also uh, meditating together. And I'm very ha happy to be in Google. Uh, today I want to talk about my book, actually. And this book I wrote, you know, almost working 10 years, called Our Pristine Mind. And uh, this book is a meditation book. And also, how do you transform human life through, um, you know, cleaning up our mind? And then I want to talk about today how do you really uh, live in vitality, energy, and straight free, and, and life in each moment? Uh, what is most important to do your life? And then I like to talk about particularly what is really human mind is. A human mind is not just what you think and what fundamentally is, and how uh, if, uh, that human mind is affect every day your life. Then I was in you know, the last few years, maybe almost 10 years, I just worked in one book. You know, it's a meditation book. Actually, um, many years working this book, and then finally finishing last year, in 2016. The, the book called is Our Pristine Mind. It actually really means, you know, how do you and, uh, really release your mind is toxic, negative, uh, pollute experiences. And I think um, then how do you experience your to yourself? How do you experience uh, your natural condition mind? And I think uh, really what is the most important thing is really how do you do that, you know? is through meditation. Meditation is, uh, like I say, pay attention to your mind. Like, for example, pay attention to your mind. You know, usually where our attention is always conditions, you know, like always we have 100% is external conditions, sounds, you know, images, you know, like test and everything. But one place we don't pay attention the, 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 the only place, the most important area is the mind. You know, why people, many people are stressed, you know, uh, sometimes feel sad or anger, sometimes depressed, and all these mental events happen because the reason is we don't know what's going on in our mind. You know, how, you know, Many areas we take care, you know, like we take care of our business, we take care of our home, even hair, you know, and you, you know, pay attention to hair, and, you know, every day, dress, everything. But one place is we ignore. What is that? It's our mind. If you forget your mind, then your mind be very complicated, yeah? The reason mind is complicated and mind is upset, always ups down, because we don't know how to fix that. We don't never pay attention to that area, that particular area. Therefore, I was, you know, like meditation means you pay attention to your mind, what it's really like, you know. I think that's really a boils down of meditation. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Means, for example, let's say your like people are stressed, like angry, anxiety, or fear, 
the meditation job is how to release these things. Yeah? How to release these things. But and how to release these energies, you know? And then medit you don't release, and then you, you have continually experienced that uncomfortable feeling. The meditation's job is how to release that. And that really, really means, for example, let's say you have a house, you know, like your house, you have 20, 30 years, you never pay attention, you never clean up, you never pay attention, clean up your house, then always walk in, but you always never pay attention, what's like that house, very messy house, yeah? It's very, very uncomfortable to place to live because you never clean up your mind, then house. But hum, 20, 30, 40 years, we never clean our mind, yeah? How many times do you clean your mind, yeah? We clean our bathroom, kitchen, and any other areas, but how many times do you clean our mind? The most best, you know, the number one is we need to clean our mind if we have fresh, energetic, enlightened experience. The, Therefore, if we don't, we don't clean our mind, the symptoms are when people are sad, that's the result is your mind is polluted. When you're sad because the mind is polluted, when you have anxiety, mind is polluted. When you have stress, your mind is polluted. When you're angry, your mind is polluted. And mind is, you know, if your mind is polluted, then every, yeah, your relationships are polluted because that's fact your relationships and connections. And that's fact every day life because you look at the world, a very stressful place because the reason is your mind is polluted, yeah? And that, that's really the reason meditation is not just only pay attention conditions. You can fix conditions, yeah? You can fix your house, you can get a good job, but your mind at the same time stirs stress, discontent, uh, you know, bad mood. That's always happened. Then how do you really fix that? That is the um, number one is the wonderful news is the, uh, your mind is originally pristine, but temporarily polluted it. And then I want to show today here on how do you experience your pristine mind. Someone says, you know, someone has experienced their healthy body, what's like that? It feels good, yeah? When you sick so many long years and then you feel sometimes, I feel my healthy body so good, it's like, like myself. Similarly, if you feel your pure consciousness, you feel your clear mind without anxiety, without fear, without, you know, stress, the clear mind, you experience, what's that? That's the most majestic experience you ever felt before. Very powerful experience. Then I want to introduce today, how do you experience that? You know, every, every this room, the mind is, you know, pristine. But there's two pristine, but right now overcast, mental events. <laughs> the thoughts, the emotions, the beliefs and habits overcast your mind, yeah? The sky is blue, you know, like clean, but the cloud made, you know, overcast the sky. Maybe you don't see the sky because clouds may obscure the parent to see the sky, yeah, similar. Similarly, if your mind is made pristine, but you cannot access because there's so much clouds, mental events, like stress, anger, fear, all these things there, you cannot experience your natural conditioned mind. Therefore, you know, we always know how to feel, you know, we feel our thoughts, yeah? We feel our emotions. We feel our habits. But how, how many people feel their pristine mind? Feeling emotions are not that comfortable. Yeah, feeling thoughts are not that comfortable. It's very awkward, you know, very, why human beings are such, so many different facials, you know, some people are like this, some people are like that. Because the emo, they touch emotions, if you don't touch your emotions, sad has a different expression, the anger has a different expression, the happiness is a different expression, but 
All human beings know how to touch their emotions, how to touch their thoughts, how to touch their belief systems, how to touch their body. But how do many people in touch with their clear awareness, perceive mind? I think that's really our about I want to talk to today. About that's really my basic message is how to really touch yourself without layers without fabrication. And then, let's say human mind is pristine, means very clear, very flawless. That's really the fundamental message from the Guru Rambuch Bhammasambhava, master of Dzogchen master. Then how do you in touch with that? This is a very wonderful way. If, if you don't meditate, you never, you never know your mind is pristine, yeah? You never meditate. Even you, if you meditated, but you didn't meditate properly, if you don't know your mind is pristine. But especially, there are many different meditations. Some meditations uh, is, you know, calm your mind. That's really the meditation. Goal is calm your mind. Some meditations are designed to, you know, like have pristine mind, pristine awareness. And then here we are talking about pristine mind meditation. Pristine mind meditation, you do that, you can experience your flawless mind. Flawless mind. How do you do that? When happened? The reason is we don't experience our mind is calm, pristine. The reason is there's so much mental events. The when mental events dissipate, then you can experience, yeah? As long as clouds and sky, you cannot see the blue sky, yeah? As long as when clouds are disappeared, and then you see the blue sky. Similarly, as long as our mind is overcast, we cannot experience our fundamental mind or pristine mind. Then when your mind is clear, when? Because when your mind is clear and because when mental events are disappear. Then when is mental events disappear? When, during the meditation. I want to talk about the, the technique to how do you disappear your mental events. If you do these four steps, your mind is clear. Your emotions are clear, your thoughts are clear. What is really the technique? Technique is this meditation is called from Guru Rinpoche Bama Sambhava, the meditator master of the he says, if you want to clear your mind, you want to enjoy your pristine mind, do these four steps. He says, first, don't follow past. Let's say 20 minutes we are doing meditation, for example. Don't follow past. Don't anticipate in future. Stay present moment. Leave your mind alone. You know? If, if, if you, your mind is not past, not future, stay present moment, and you leave your mind alone, then what happens internally? That's meditation. And that means your thoughts, emotions, anxiety, fear, everything's dissipated there because they're conditional. They cannot survive without paying attention to their object. And then thoughts, emotions, and sadness, anxiety, stress, everything's dissipate. When they're dissipate, what is you experience? You experience your awareness without layers. Then you experience really perceived mind. That really, the meditation is go into the perceived mind time to time. Today I enter the perceived mind, you know, like I did this meditation technique and then my mind is clear. And then I stay there 10 minutes. I stay with pristine mind 10 minutes. And tomorrow you repeat the same thing. You pristine mind 10 minutes. Then over time, you have, even if you are not meditating, your mind is 70% clearer than normal people's mind. I think the number one happiness is, number one happiness in this world, you can tell me better than that. Someone's mind is pristine. That's highest quality happiness in this universe. You can't tell me you know, this is much better. You know, 
I think when people's mind is clear and pristine, everything, whole entire being is very comfortable and very sense of well-being. And you have straightforward of the world. It's just no hindrance there, yeah? If your mind is, let's say, distorted, you know, polluted, then everything's become complicated. You know, complication comes from when mind is polluted and distorted. And that really means human beings, what we need, you know, like that, we need to enjoy the world, says you enjoy the world, you need to have beautiful mind. If you have the beautiful mind, you have to enjoy the world. But you have the mind is not good quality, as distorted, then you don't enjoy the world. Therefore, in order to enjoy the world, success your work, connect other people, and also appreciate everything, what is really you need? You need to have clear mind. Clear mind is key to the success, effective work, and also relationships, every day life. What is really key is clear mind. When you have clear mind, you are doesn't matter. You are fearless, and you are comfortable with yourself. Yeah. And therefore, how many? Let's say you have your mind is seventy percent overcast. You know, let's say seventy percent. That means that day you are not comfortable. Maybe you are stressed. You are maybe have anxiety, and you are uncomfortable. Let's say that day seventy percent overcast your mind. 70, 60, 70, 80 percent. They says you know. 70% and clouds and sky, that means 70% chance of rain, yeah? 70%, 100% and, uh, you know, uh, there's tremendous in this, in clouds and sky, sometimes there's 100% chance of rain. Why is there 100% chance of rain? Because there's so many clouds and sky, yeah? Similar, the more thoughts, emotions, are, the more in your mind, your mind is complete over there, 100% chance you're upset. <laughs> and also 100% chance you're maybe some angry or maybe you have you know, offended someone or something happens because mind is too you know, cloudy. And therefore, here is the meditation is how do you reduce 70% your mental events? It's not necessary. Like, for example, you have a house, yeah? You don't put everything there. You can clean, maybe you can clean up, you know, time to time uh, your house, yeah? Similarly, the meditation is time to time clear your mind. Therefore, I was talked to, you know, many years here, and people were meditating, and then said they do meditation today or tomorrow. Next few days, they have best experiences. It's just not only my doing, but I train many different people. Like people, I, mean, I live in Marin County, and I go to San Francisco and Marin, and also other places, you know, uh, tech companies. Uh, and I went to Autodesk, uh, you know, some other tech company went to. Also, I went to Google, you know, schools. You know, I teach regular people. They told me, they says, oh, I did meditation, you know, like three, four, day, one week. It's tremendous benefit. Because meditation means you're directly working your mind, yeah? You're directly working your mind. Means, of course, impact there. Therefore, I want to say, talk about today here, pristine mind and unconditional happiness. But I think this is a very beautiful unconditional happiness. I want to say a few things, unconditional happiness. Unconditional happiness is connect with the pristine mind. Say, if your mind is 70% are clear, and 70% are like, a, a, you know, 70, 60% are clear and pristine, definitely your happiness is no longer conditional. What does that mean? What that mean? The meaning is, if your mind is pristine, definitely your mind is comfortable without condition. Um, or mind is, there's a sense of well-being. You know, when mind is pristine, definitely there's a sense of well-being. And there's a sense of well-being, there's a presence, there's very healthy, mind is very healthy, 
And without condition, you feel good. Yeah? Without condition, you feel good. You don't need always, you know, the needy something's making me happy, always searching. But if your mind is really comfortable, fundamentally comfortable, you know? It's not like just comfortable come from some conditions from, you know, you went to talk to someone that makes you feel comfortable, or you eat something, it does mean, they call conditional happiness. Conditional happiness always recharge each time, yeah? We, sometimes we are dependent of conditional happiness. And then most times, uh, conditional happiness is uh, called uh, instant gratification, like coffee, drinking coffee. Yeah? Drinking coffee immediately, you're <laughs> very good. And then a few, mar- a few, hours, a few hours later, then it's finished, that energy. Then in- in external conditional happiness is a very instant gratification, and then disappears. But unconditional happiness is always within you. What that means, your mind is some degree pristine, you feel comfortable all the time. You know, like, especially after you do meditation. After your meditation, your mind is comfortable, and then you talk to other people who are very comfortable. Just set your surface. Always you go walk in cities, towns that are very comfortable because there's no, you know, uncomfortable thoughts. Because the reason is fear comes from your thoughts, yeah? The more you have thoughts, this and that, positive and negative, the more you have fearful. The more you have thoughts, the more you have anxiety. The more you have thoughts, the more you have stress. Therefore, during the meditation, all thoughts are subside. When your thoughts are subside, we are fear subsides. And because fear is really your thoughts. And um, then your thoughts are subside, your anger is subside. Your thoughts subside, everything subsides. And then when they all subside, they call it the fundamental peace. The two peace come from with your you know, um, access of pristine mind. Therefore, unconditional happiness means, you know, like for example, my body is healthy, yeah? My, when my body is healthy, I feel good no matter what, yeah? Because my body is healthy, therefore I feel good. Similar, when your mind is pristine, you feel good no matter what. Similar. You, physically, you need a healthy mind, a healthy body, but mentally, you need a pristine mind. The more your mind is polluted, the more you're uncomfortable. Really, people are uncomfortable. The reason is their mind is polluted, a distorted. A distorted mind is not that happy, not that content. Therefore, usually, you know, if you have a distorted mind, then there's war, war between your body and mind, yeah? Body, mind really criticizes body. Body, you know, there's, mind says body, oh, you're ugly, and you're fat, you're, just, uh, you know, old, you have bold, you're not here. <laughs> you're, you know, you're not clean, and mind, mind always criticizes body, and then that's the reason the body is very sick, because mind between, there's war, body and mind. And then the mom, body is sick, then when body is sick, then mind is unhappy. The mind is stressed because your body, there's war between body and mind that's going on, and that really impacts people's life, and impacts people's stress, impacts relationships, impacts you know, their health. But when your mind is pristine, the war ends. When your mind is pristine, and then the body, mind, there's united. They call it yoga, you know. Yoga means union of body and mind. Means when your mind is pristine, then your mind says, you know, like, hugs your body. <laughs> you know, say, I like you, I love you. Say, your, your uh, mind loves body, body loves mind, you know. There's union, there's harmony experience, because all the symptoms are thoughts, you know, projections, and you know, negative thoughts created between body and mind. When negative thoughts are disappear, there's body mind completely come together, and body mind come together, and I think that's the most beautiful thing. And say, what is really your body mind is same direction, the opposite direction. Yeah, body goes that. Mind goes that. There are conflict between the most, every personal problems come from that. 
stress, anxiety, fear, all these things. And when your mind and body join together, then they call happiness, joy, healthy living, success, enlightenment. Everything comes from there. Therefore, in order to you have body and mind come together, I think you need to have pristine mind. Pristine mind is the number one uh, you know, solution. And then I, I, I like to talk about this. How do you do it happen? Let's say, first they call realization pristine mind. Realization pristine mind. I mean, pristine mind means I give, this is my meditation introduction. You see this? And, you know, globe, fog globe. <laughs> only San Francisco has, only snow globe is different. And you see this uh, globe is very clearly, yeah? It's pristine quality, yeah? Pristine. That's real, this is natural condition, mind is like this. When human mind is very calm, relaxed, happy, and then it's uh, like it's like this. It's very pristine quality. It's a very, very, very natural condition like that. This is really a human mind is like that. Let's say when you're upset, you're thinking something negative, someone doing something negative, you're thinking about that. What happens? You see? Everything's distorted. You cannot see the Golden Gate Bridge here, yeah? <laughs> A Golden Gate Bridge disappears. No, everything's polluted, yeah? The more you shake, the more you pollute, the more pollutes. And similarly, the more you think the problem you have, the more your mind is distorted, and the more your mind is polluted. And then what is really like? When you're angry, your mind is like this. When you're sad, your mind is like this. When you stress, your mind is like this. When you have any other mental events, your mind is like this. Because the come, why you are like that, we call pollute mind. Mind is pollute. Let's say, how do you resolve that? The more you continue shake, you continue like that. Similarly, some problem occur, and then you think and continue to then continue like that. How do you resolve that? They says meditation introduction says, don't follow past, don't participate in the future, stay present, leave your mind alone. Let's leave this alone. What happens? You see? Slowly, slowly. Going, leave mind alone. Don't follow past. Don't anticipate in the future. Stay present moment. Leave your mind alone. You see, when you leave your mind alone, not going after the conditions, the, this is become clear, same as mind is become more clear, clear, and then your mind is become pristine, yeah? And then if you do meditation, for example, so, someone says, I'm angry, I'm very stressed. What do I do? What you do is, when you stress, don't follow past. Don't anticipate in the future. Stay present moment. Leave your mind alone. And then stay there five minutes. And slowly, slowly, the stress, energy, you know, uh, free and then dissolve. Because they're not anywhere in your mind. They're conditional. Stress is conditional. It's not it exists in your mind. Because that's really mind is pristine. And same as your anger. When you're angry, Say, you know, like, how do you really manage your anger? Don't follow past. Don't anticipate in the future. Stay present moment. Leave your mind alone. And then your anger and that energy fade away because they're conditional. I just put this book and everything, you know, and I put, I put this book, everything, how to practice, how do your mind become clear, how do you really uh, enjoy uh, you know, pristine mind. And also, you say, enjoy means like, I think this is very important. The other is, one way, meditation clarifies your mind. The other thing is, you want to expand your enjoy and satisfaction, the happiness. What you need to do is you need to clear your mind. When you are clear your mind, you enjoy everything. You enjoy, you know, like, People go somewhere, I need to do something. 
you know, I was very young, for example, younger time, I just always enjoyed to do some things, you know, something, entertain things. But when you get in old, everything's same old, same old, yeah? <laughs> then right now, what I do, my, my secret to happiness is, if I did meditation, maybe 20 minutes, pristine mind meditation, 20 minutes, and that really gave, that's really gave me whole day, today, tomorrow, my mind is, I can enjoy everything after that. It's not conditions, you know, we cannot, conditions are always there, but the mind is the problem, not enjoy, not appreciate. But you have the best mind, you enjoy everything. There, there's a quote I would call here, it's, if you find a happiness within you, you find a happiness everywhere, you know. It means your mind is comfortable, you have unconditional happiness, the conditional happiness is much power, more powerful, double, triple. Let's say your mind is complicated, you never find happiness anywhere because mind is comfortable, unappreciative. Because happiness and joy, good connections, relationships, mainly depend how much you have beautiful mind. I mean very clear mind. I think there's a really between connection, clear mind and happiness, and distorted mind and happiness. When your mind is polluted, there's definitely there's unhappiness, stress. And when your mind is clear, there's happiness and joy. You can tell that. For example, when you say, today is a beautiful day, I'm very happy. You look that moment, you see your mind is clear that moment. You see that, yeah, everybody's. Yeah, say, today I'm very angry, stress. You see that moment, your mind is polluted. The pollution mind is connected with uh, you know, unhappiness, stress, all these things. And pristine mind is connected with happiness, sense, and joy. You know how to connect other people. You're more productive for the world. You know, f um, you're more fearless. Um, I think that's really are the uh, benefits about uh, practice of pristine mind. Therefore, I don't have much time to write now. I think, uh, we have questions, answers, and uh, I think you can do this meditation, everybody, because everybody has a duty to clear their mind. Once your mind is clear, and everything is straightforward, and that really, really, we need, you know, the world is so much developed right now, external conditions are so good, but we don't have, we don't have that kind of mind. We don't have, we, our mind is more distorted than before. <laughs> our mind is more polluted, and I think now is time to clean our human mind, and then then we can factor more the external world, and we can bring more happiness, fulfillment, and therefore I think that's number one. And then I think therefore I want want to say brief, briefly and two things: the the meditation you know can say pristine mind meditation can change your perception. Because if you change your perception, you change your world, yeah? And therefore, changing your perception, what that means, when the more you meditate, the more you realize that your mind is pristine. Oh, yes, I can't believe I never noticed before because I never pay attention. Now I see my mind is pristine. And then you realize second time, oh, yeah, my thoughts, emotions, stress, they're not me. They're just mental events. They are not different than that cloud. The cloud are just there because conditions are there. Then when the cloud are disappeared, then just gone, yeah? My happiness, sadness, anger, all these things are just like that cloud. And the meditators realize that. They call change your perception and change your experiences. Yeah, and think that's the one to say a few things. And then I think you now it's, um, um, I, I want to have some, anybody have any questions? I want to have a uh, question answer session. They want to do me that. Sunam, that's very good. And anyone has questions, please raise your hands. So in the mindfulness tradition, there are different forms of meditation. There's focus on the breath, there's open awareness, and the transcendental, there's a focus on a mantra. So is this form of meditation different from any of those? 
Good question, yes. Uh, mindfulness means that meditations are goal sometimes. There's two different kinds of meditations. One is object-based meditation, and the other is objectless meditation. Object-based meditation means like you focus mantra and breath. And that's really called, the Buddha says that when you do, you know, like going to slowly, slowly, first, you know, mindfulness meditation's goal is calming the mind down. You know, calming the, calming the mind down, they says. And once you calm the mind down, and then slowly, slowly journey into slowly pristine mind. That's traditionally do that. First, do the focus mantra, focus, you know, the like breath. And when your mind is calmed down, then what do you do? And what do you do when your mind is calmed down? And then, then is leave your mind alone. <laughs> After that, until you are not calm, try to make your mind calm, relaxed. And then once your mind is calmed down, then don't rock the boat, you want to say? Don't rock the boat. Then it's just sit with that. The more you sit with calmness, and then that means you leave your mind alone. First, you need focus. Maybe someone don't know how to do that. Maybe you focus breath and also focus mantra. This sometimes is traditionally called preliminary preparations of person mind. And then once you know how to capable, uh, you have capable uh, watching the breath, or you have mantra many years, and then you do the pristine mind going that direction. Or some people go, they're able to directly. There are different methods. For example, mindfulness, the goal is totally calming your mind down. And that's they want to talk about, you know, usually traditionally. Calm your mind down, feel very uh, peace, and, you know, tranquil, tranquility, the main focus. And then, you want to go beyond that, then it's going to, uh, you focus pristine mind. And the pristine mind is then go deep more. First focus object, external object. Breath is external object. Mind is external object. When you talk about pristine mind, you focus, just leave conditions out. Just go more deep drive into, deep into your awareness. And then it's, that's called pristine mind meditation. Traditional, this is called objectless meditation. There's no object focus. First, you, like I say, you know, like for example, like um, airplane and sky. Like airplane and sky, first you need r using runway, yeah? Without runway, you cannot fly in the sky. But using the runway, then you fly and continue the sky, sky yeah? Similar, first people don't know how to calm their mind, they're using breath. And then that's the runway. And you know, like take into the deep journey your aware, pristine mind. And then runway and mantra is focused. And sometimes sounds, you know, like sounds like water sound, or focus that. These things gave you tranquility. Once your mind is calmed down, then what do you do? Leave your mind alone. Then continue to learn journey. And then don't focus external conditions. Then it's just only in, yeah? When you airplane in the sky, just going to f continue the sky. There's nothing to do, you know, with the runway. <laughs> Similarly, when you deep into the awareness, there's nothing to do with uh, uh, breath or mantra. All these things are beginnings they do, and that's really a, one is a mantra and breath. They call object-based meditation, and pristine mind is objectless meditation, and that's the next step. Thank you. You talked a little bit about um, conditional happiness yes. and how having a clear mind is un, un, it will lead to unconditional happiness. Yes. Sometimes it feels like I'm like, I want to go sit because I feel like I'm going to be happy and it feels like I'm, I'm kind of grasping for that or I'm, mm. I'm turning the practice into con mm. a, a conditional form of happiness. Mm. Can you give any tips on how to avoid that? I think, um, you know, it's not a problem you can, you know, like... Um, it says I want to do practice, um, that's normal, it's anything. But um, I think the main thing is make sure your mind is really um, uh, doing the meditation properly. When you meditation properly, you do it and everything's take care. But I think the number one is uh, when you do meditation, it doesn't matter how you, you know, you need to do something, say I need to do meditation. 
That's, I think, uh, we need that inspiration, that motivation. Without that mo motivation, you never do meditation. Therefore, we need to do the, that inspiration, that aspiration to, I want to do meditation, and that enthusiasm very much. And then, depend what kind of meditation. People ask me this is, can you fix my meditation? But I ask first, what kind of meditation you do? And what are your goals? You know, you say, when you do exercise, we know clear what are your goals, you know, doing exercise. Go to gym means you want a clear, you know, healthy body and very you know, losing weight. That's your, therefore you go into exercise, you know. What's, why, it's, uh, why people are doing meditation? You need to know what the goal is. The goal is, you know, uh, vanish negative thoughts, emotions, mind, it become clear, tranquil, pristine, that's your goal. I think um, then it's, uh, you have that experience or not. And then it's not, then it's you're not doing properly. Maybe you need to find out why, how to do that. And then it's yes, then it's you're, you're going to reach your goals. And therefore, make sure your mind is some degree pristine and you know, some degree clear. And I think, um, and a tranquil. And a tranquil means I'm not like very, you know, how do you say, passive, but tranquil means there's energy. There, you know, for example, when you're healthy, there's energy, yeah? Very healthy, there's energy. Your healthy body has lots of energy. Similar, when your mind is tranquil, there's lots of vibrant energy. It's not like, oh, I'm peace, you know, it's peace. It's not like that. It's very strong energy, tranquility, you know, sense of well-being, and clear mind is so strong presence there. And therefore, make sure that's uh, there. I think you can, um, it's a very good. And therefore, I think I want to mention, if you have unconditional happiness, and the conditional happiness is double, triple, this is. Say you go vacation, let's say. Vacation is, let's say, conditional happiness. And your mind is calm and, you know, like tranquil, but you enjoy more vacation, let's say. But your mind is turbulent, complicated, polluted. You don't much enjoy the vacation. Therefore, how much enjoy external conditions depend how much you have comfortable mind. Not can, therefore, that is unconditional hap you know, happiness. I don't know why human beings are not focused that. You understand why? Because everything's obsessed with the conditions, but conditions are only we need to get a 30% happiness. I think it looks like, I know, the more richer you are, the more you are stressed for, yeah? <laughs> the more famous you are, the more you stress. There are so many, any time each year, one, you know, musician take drugs and die, you know. You know, always we hear him each year, you know, Michael Jackson is most famous, you know, rock star, but he's, you know, die with drugs, you know, like he's numbing his mind. And, you know, conditions are, order to you enjoy conditions, you need to have the right mind. If you don't have the right mind, you never enjoy life and uh, conditions. Therefore, life enlightenment and they all come from, you have the right mindset, and pristine mind is key to success in this world, and, and more effective. And also I just have experience training many people to, you know, people, high tech companies, other places they work, and they told me totally different when they have meditated, because they have less fearful, there's no anxiety, stress, they can, talk to other people without fear. I think my own experience, for example, I go around many different groups. When my mind is self-consciousness, I cannot connect people. But my mind is some degree pristine, I can connect people, even I never met. Because the thoughts only disconnect the people. Thoughts, you know. But all thoughts, self-consciousness, hesitation, judgment is disappear. You can stray forward, there's connection. I think that's really unconditional happiness. And when you have unconditional happiness, the conditional happiness is much powerful, more lasts long. I think that's really uh, universal, also uh, understanding when your mind is really such a good place. I like that you said the, the pristine mind is like that, the goal. And you gave us, I think, a, a four, the four paths, which is there seems like a lot of freedom there you have. 
don't look to the past, don't look to the future, be in the moment. I'm not using the exact words, and also um, Leave your don't mind. follow the mind. Yeah. And it sounds very good, a lot of freedom, and um, it yeah, sounds yeah. so good. My question is, so is this very open so that we can, how are we, like you're not necessarily saying you have to do like a mantra meditation or this kind of meditation. It's, there's a lot of freedom there. As long as oh, we're yeah, yeah. sticking to those steps, we can actually simply get to that pristine mind. Yeah, exactly. I could do walking, I could do my yeah, yeah. meditation. Yeah, I, good question. Last question. For example, when you meditate, you need two things you're familiar. One is uh, meditation's reputation, you know, like when you go to exercise, gym, every day you do the same thing, then losing weight, yeah? You same thing. Similarly, when you meditate, two things you're learning. One is remaining present moment. That's your learning. Is you, you don't do today, today meditate. Let's say you begin today, and then you stay present moment, but your mind is chaos. You cannot do it. And next time you repeat again. Next time, one, two, three, four, five days. Five days later, and yeah, I, I can live a bit much better than I can stay present moment. I have ability to say, stay present moment one minute. You have ability, yeah? You have ability one minute, stay present. And then you say, I gained that maybe one week. And next, maybe two weeks after, and then you do more, do, do meditation, or say, I have. You know, five minutes, I have the ability to stay present moment. If you have the ability to stay present moment, five minutes, definitely your mind is clear that five minutes. And then I'll say, yeah, oh, I have that ability. Then slowly, slowly, you are learning, leave your mind alone. We don't know how to do that. Human beings, mind is chaos, yeah? But the more you meditate and try to do, maybe... One, you, let's say today you start, one month, one month later, you, you're able to do leave your mind alone. If you do these two things, if you have stay present moment awareness, leave your mind alone, definitely you have pristine mind. Because if you do that, all thoughts, emotions are dissipated, they're conditional, you know. You all leave your mind alone, stir there, you're angry, there's no way. <laughs> you leave your mind alone, you're stressed, no. If you do these two things, stay present moment, leave your mind alone, and then your mind is clear because all thoughts, emotions, their conditional mind, they disappear. And that's you learning like exercise. And then gradually you occur. It's not overnight. It's not one work. And you do, I, you know, you have the book, yeah? You have the book. I, there's two guided meditations in this book. And one is second part, one guided meditation. The other is third part. There's another guided meditation, two guided meditations. Also, there's audio book. That's very easy to you know, uh, do. There's a guided meditation directly take you into the pristine mind. And then it's just repeat. Meditation, you know, people think they can do meditation. But no, first you learn meditation. Then you meditate. Like first you learn to drive, yeah? Then you drive. First you say, first you are not meditating. First you are just learning meditation. After you learn how do you stay present moment, you leave your mind alone, and then you know how, then you do that. And that really, really, you know, people are telling me, you know, their mind is chaos, you know, like all over the place. That's normal beginners. It's never... Uh, don't discourage, you know, beginner's mind is always chaos. That's normal. If thoughts occur, that's normal. But you come back, present moment, if you're watching breath, stay with breath, and you have the ability to leave your mind alone, you do that. And then naturally, uh, thoughts, emotions are subside. The more you do that, the more your mind is 70% clear. And even if you are not meditated at that moment, um, because the, gradually, uh, I think a percentage is very good, percentage. Let's say uh, my mind is 20% clear, you know. Then it's my mind is 40% clear. Then his mind is 70% clear. I like percentage works because that's reality. And that really means you need familiar with how do you stay present moment, how do you leave your mind alone. These two things can really, if you able to do that, you have the ability to. The meditators, they have the ability to do that. For example, someone do the meditation 
one year, that means it's not like, oh, they're meditating sometimes, you go room, come back, there's your same person. No, you need to gain some ability. What kind of ability you should gain? You have stay present moment without distracting. You have that ability, and that's the result of meditation. You, have, you can leave your mind alone when you're upset. When you leave your mind, when you're upset, you'll leave your mind alone, then everything's a dissolved. You have that kind of ability is the, the result of meditation. Therefore, two things you focus. Just um, um, stay present moment, leave your mind alone, just focus that, and then I think you can do that. Okay? So does that mean that if you are meditating properly, then you don't have any thoughts in your mind? You want or not? <laughs> I mean, I'm doing the meditation, alone. and it's not, it depends, you know, like someone's really, for example, let's say doing the meditation, 20, let's say 20 minutes you're doing the meditation. The last thoughts are more good, last thoughts, because uh, even, a, you know, like someone's um, a meditation, even a good meditation, maybe 70% mind is pristine calm, but you have still 20% uh, go some, or say you have that, someone's yelling, oh, there's someone's yelling, or I say, what time is, that's normal. It's not like, for example, like, let's like, like give you sky, you know, Sky, overcast sky is not problematic, but you know, like little bit clouds are not a big deal. You know, here, there, clouds are not a big deal. Over, hazy sky is not, it's no problem, yeah? When you meditating, most meditation is a hazy mind state. Hazy, because you, hazy mind means you can wear, but still you have small mental events, you know? And that's really normal, therefore, um, yeah, thoughts are, occur doing the meditation normal, but our overcast is, you cannot meditate. Your mind is overcast, thoughts, emotions. Therefore, first you need to work out overcast mind. When you overcast, mind is no longer overcast, I think hazy mind is no problem. We are made, our meditation is almost hazy mind. Hazy some, you know, like, there are some clear, same time there are some thoughts. Therefore, there are five different, you know, like uh, skies. Stormy sky, there's uh, thunder lightning sky, there's um, rainy sky, yeah, there's um, uh, cloudy sky, and there's clear sky, yeah? And there's pristine sky, yeah? There are five different skies. Same is same, different kind of minds. Very overcast mind, and then it's a rainy mind, and there's, uh, you know, um, uh, cloudy mind, then there's um, hazy mind, and the clear mind and pristine mind. They all just go to the and a human mind that way. And therefore, thoughts are no problem you doing the meditation. You lost into your present moment, then it's problem. I was wondering, what is the difference between a clear mind and a pristine mind? I wasn't sure I understood that part. Like, is there some, are you saying we'll just reach that point eventually? I think clear means like, you, you, you know, clear is a relative. And the pristine is not relative. It's pristine is the high quality one, yeah? Most clear means someone says this may be clear, maybe subtle is still not clear, maybe, and still there something's going on. Exactly similar, I think they're a little bit different. You know, pristine and clear, actually they're two different words. I think clear means, you know, you see clearly. Pristine means the high quality, that's very natural, very unfabricated. I think high quality is the pristine. You know, clear water and pristine water is a little bit different, you know. You know, water is clear, still maybe there's something. <laughs> but pristine water means fabulous water, yeah? Uh, similarly, pristine mind and clear mind, but pristine mind is the natural, unfabricated, original mind. It's the pristine mind. So is there something beyond pristine mind or is that the final goal? That's the final goal, yeah. When, for example, human bodies, you know, like, the highest quality of health, you know, very normal. Similarly, the highest goal is pristine mind. When you have pristine mind, every all world is called. Uh, there's uh, this. Um, this um, all thoughts, emotions, experiences take that quality, pristine quality. This is your mind is polluted. Then 
Every thoughts, emotions are polluted. And that's really the, uh, you know, like the um, uh, reality is that, that's a really reality that happens. Okay? And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.